Welcome to Built on Faith Homestead. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name's Justin. What's your name? Melissa. Melissa. <laughs> Should have known that. We've been married a little while. This is our Tiny House Talk Tuesday. <laughs> and um, we talk about all kinds of stuff on our Tiny House Talk. It's really more just a discussion that you get to witness between me and my wife. Is usually what these end up being. Um, which is good. It's really, really good. Uh, but we also have life lessons with the animals that you might see on, on Mondays that we post. And um, uh, stuff about wild edibles and gardening and animals and uh, things about the Lord and, and who knows what all else. Some current events every once in a while uh, I'll post about. That kind of stuff. Um, but today on our Tiny House Talk Tuesday. <laughs> Tiny House Talk Tuesday. <laughs> try to say that ten times fast. Uh, we're going to talk about homeschooling. Right? Yes. Homeschooling. We are not homeschooling experts, first and foremost. I want to put that out there. Um, we, we, we have one kid that is being homeschooled right now. The other two are too small to be yep. in homeschool. However, Leah kind of, I mean, she's, she's not in any sort of official, like you are not got paperwork for her, but she likes to draw and tell her and stuff while Lavelle's doing schoolwork. Yeah, and she can halfway count to ten almost, and she's Already. not even two. <laughs> right. Um, From just hearing me working with Luella. So... Uh, there's definitely some benefits, mm -hmm. right? And that's one of them, is your younger kids start picking up some of that stuff really early. Yep. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about why we chose to homeschool. I believe that's something we should talk about. I probably should have wrote these down. This would have been a lot smoother. But we're, we're going to probably start <laughs> off with talking about why we chose to homeschool. And then we'll also, we we'll we probably all should also talk about the challenges of homeschooling in a tiny house, right? Yeah. And we'll just kind of see how the conversation flows from there. The reason we chose to homeschool um, was, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Melissa and I both are Christians, mm -hmm. right? And both believe um, in following the Word of God. Uh, some of you out there um, who are also Christians would probably potentially, anyhow, let me say potentially, consider Melissa and I a little bit on the um, probably extreme side. Um, and I say that because not trying to like toot our own horn, right? Do, 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 do. That has nothing to do with it. It's, we believe very strongly that like, um, our children should not, um, have any toys that have anything to do with like witches or sorcery or any of that kind of stuff, right? Even if they seem like nice witches or nice sorcerers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, those kinds of things. We're very passionate about those kinds of things. And part of the reason why we've had some experiences in our life that has, um, been very eye-opening. Let me put it that way. It's probably the best way I can think of putting it. And so we're very passionate about those kinds of things. We're very passionate about um, protecting our children from those kinds of things. Also, um, we're very passionate about raising our children um, to not have to conform to the social norms of the world that we live in today. Right? Like, we don't want our kids to be crazy and weird and all that kind of... That's not what we're saying. No. But we want them to be... Like, I don't care how they figure out whether or not 2 plus 2 equals 4. Like, I want them to know that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Right. But how they figure that out, how they learn that, um, doesn't matter to me, right? If they learn that by figuring out that 2 eggs and 2 more eggs is 4 eggs, or if they learn that by learning the numbers on a piece of paperwork. And now... Um, I must admit, Melissa does um, pretty much all of the homeschooling uh, <laughs> stuff. She sees herself <laughs> she sees, in this sees herself. video. She does pretty much all the homeschooling stuff. And I, I think, anyway, and correct me if I'm misspeaking here because I may be, uh, but we seem to do kind of a combination of like sit down, paperwork type work, and um, the type of work that is going and collecting Abba. eggs and counting the eggs and tell us how many there are and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Abba. So, Luella even helped me uh, there one day when we were working on a tiny house. She came down here with me and I taught her what the different tools were. Right? This is a hammer and this is a framing square and this is a tape measure and a screwdriver and all that kind of stuff. And we counted that as homeschool because she was learning tools and those kinds of things as a kid, right? And I don't believe... And I don't think Melissa does either. Uh, we've talked a lot about this before we chose to homeschool. But our school systems, um, so it's not been that long since I've been in school. It's been a while, but not that long. Um, they're teaching so many different things that just aren't necessary or as necessary in life as other things.
things and it just boggles our mind right mm -hmm. so you even take the wild edibles for instance like why was that not in our science classes i don't know um stuff like that and like i took like personal finance yeah but i wish they would have went more in depth on it and more uh one-on-one -on -one, basically um i know you can't do that in public school really um so uh, i used to be a teacher um, a para and uh it's very hard to be one-on-one -on -one, which for a para you are one-on-one -on -one, usually but for an actual teacher of like 30 kids it's almost impossible unless you tutor um i mean you do your best but uh and with homeschool you can be one-on-one -on -one and yeah. explain real life situations that maybe we're in or decisions and why we're making them financially yeah. uh, especially when they get older so that's one of the reasons why we have the chickens and the rabbits besides just sustainability is we first when we very first got the chickens like our first decision like we are going to get chickens it was we wanted our kids to be able to sell eggs one of these days that just because they sold twenty dollars worth of eggs on friday don't mean they can go spend twenty dollars right that they got to buy feed and replenish that feed and right just because they made a twenty dollar bill they may actually have only made five dollars right and we wanted them to learn about that yeah. right one of the things that excites me about homeschool is i don't know about you guys uh, but I and I struggled in school. Like, I didn't like school at all. I, I liked my friends. I liked the teachers. I wasn't one of those kids that like, I don't like the teachers, right? Like, I, I liked most of my, I mean, I had a couple I didn't like. Everybody has a couple teachers they don't like, right? But, like, I got along great with my teachers. I got along great with people, right? And I always got in trouble for visiting too much. I know it's going to shock you, but for talking too much to people. <laughs> I would get in trouble. He still does. <laughs> I still do. And the teacher would move me and I'd be like, I'm friends with that guy too. Like, it's all good, right? Um, I remember I was in math one day, and right? And I was just struggling like I always did. And then I went to a um, science class where I had labs. And we were doing lab work. And in the lab, I was doing the same math that I was doing in my math class on paper, but in the lab it made sense to me because I could see it, right? I could see it, I could touch it, I could feel it, I could see how it was working. And that same math in that lab, it clicked there. It did not click in the math classroom. I struggled in math. No, yeah. I was probably my worst. So I did find that they started putting letters in it. Yeah, yeah. I think I got scared it would be language <laughs> class. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about the idea that we can find out how our kids learn and really emphasize that right and really work through that uh, with them yeah and like for example i already know <clears throat> so luella works pretty good on uh, sit down stuff like paper stuff um, especially if she has an incentive she also likes to go outside and i don't blame her you know yeah. um she likes to have goals um rewards uh I would say. Yeah, ice cream. <laughs> ice cream works. So, and then Leah, I already know, uh, Leah has to be doing something uh, all the time. Yeah. So I'm going to have to think of ways that maybe when I get done with Luella's stuff and try my best with Leah inside that maybe we have to do something outside or something with her hands. She's got to be yeah. doing something. Uh, she's listening. Even though she may be doing something or yeah. playing, she's listening. So I was left the same way when I was a kid, right? So I was a doodler, and I don't—I'm not artistic at all. Right? I wasn't making pretty doodles, but I had to do something to occupy my hands so no, my ears that. could listen. Even the other day, Melissa came outside, and I was talking to somebody on the phone, which I'm a—I am a full-time pastor, and so um, I might spend some time. I spent quite a bit of time on the phone, and Melissa came outside, and I was outside. And I was whittling a stick while I was talking on the phone. Um, and, and she kind of, we was kind of laughing about it. Right? But I told her, that's how I listen. Right? If I'm not doing, it's so much harder for me to listen yeah, if I'm not doing something yeah. like that. Yeah. Terrible. I wish I wasn't that way. And like, but, yeah. Luella, she's our oldest. And like I said, she's the only one in school right now. Whenever, uh, last year when we first started, um, for her numbers, um, she did really good. She's excited, you know, and then the new wore off, right? Um, and 
she can write to 100. She's not even, so she won't be in kindergarten until next month. Um, well, I was wanting to get paper while we're doing the homeschool <laughs> video. And so she, she does struggle a little bit in math, um, staying attentive, um, wanting to finish the numbers. Um, so for a while there, she wouldn't even want to try to start. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what else to do. Like, I was praying about it, you know, and I just didn't know, I didn't know what else to do. And one day, um, I think, you know, the Lord just kind of gave it to me, but, um, I had thought, okay, an incentive, right? She's more of a goal type person, uh, or a reward type person. So I made a sheet. I should have brought it over here, but I made a sheet, uh, that is just, I just put math prize on a piece of notebook paper. Like it wasn't fancy, nothing, nothing yeah. has to be fancy. Uh, and every time she does her number, she gets a sticker, right? Um, and I put her name and then lines or rows. Okay. And every time she does her number, she gets a sticker. When she gets 10 stickers, um, I said, you can have a prize up at the gas station we'll get a prize and I said it could be a candy bar or an ice cream yeah or a soda pop she loves root beer um yes yeah, coke dr pepper whatever um chips anything and she's she loves uh candy bars and junk food like that and stuff which she like any other you kid. know yeah um and like some soft serve ice cream yeah and so she yeah. has been so looking forward to ice cream and since then she has almost five stickers now and we only started that like last week. Yeah, yeah, we're not having to push her very hard to do her numbers. There's been a couple times you still have to push her. Uh, she's one of those you have to keep saying, come on, Lamella, finish them, you know? Yeah. Um, and every kid's different. And that's the beauty with homeschool is that you can work with your child. I mean, who knows your child better than your mom or dad? Yeah. And you can really push them hard where they need to be pushed. Like if they're really good at something and you need to press them and challenge them, you can press them and challenge them. Yep. But if they're not very good at somewhere else, then you can ease up there a little bit, right? And then, uh, still, I mean, push them to get better, but you can move at a slower pace. And Luella, she does need pushed uh, a lot. Yeah. But you do have to push her. Yeah. She will get there, uh, but you do have to push her. Yeah. It's exciting to me to be able to um, spend extra time with our children, right? There's no doubt about that, where you're not sending them to school, right? You're able to spend some more time with them. But it's also exciting to me that the idea of being able to teach them outside of the box, right? So Luella, the other day, she was, she got some family, fa friends and family that go to public school, right? And she was asking, like, you know, why don't I go to public school? And I just want to be like everybody else and all these things. And of course, her mama and myself, we both know, like, kid, you have got it made. Yeah. But she didn't go to public school, so she doesn't know, right? <laughs> um, I'm like, man, you you have awesome lunches. You get no. ice cream for writing in your numbers. We didn't get ice cream for writing our no. numbers in school. Yeah. No. No. Um, like, you have got it made, but she doesn't know that, right? Um, the biggest thing, though, for me is being able to use those interactive times, right? How exciting that is for me uh, to be able to use those interactive times to allow them to learn and allow them to learn the way they need to learn, not the way that a cooker cutty, a cooker cookie cutter approach, right? That probably does work good for, she's over here writing letters now. Uh, that, that cookie cutter approach probably does work for like, I don't know what, maybe 60 to 70 percent of kids mm -hmm. but for the other 30 to 40 percent right with well, the school system's failing and i'm gonna be honest uh so i used to work with some homeschool kids mm -hmm. they were smart way smarter than like i was and right. most like public school kids yeah like i'm not trying to say like public school kids are not smart, no no, are. no 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 like i'm not saying that at all but I do think there is a lot of benefits for. Yeah, I think there is too. For what we're talking about, uh, right? Thinking outside of the box, 
And being Christians, right when it like comes to science, we can teach them about creation. We will tell them about the secular view of evolution, but we will teach them about creation. Right? Yeah. And they're not going to do that in school. right? We can teach them um, about the Bible during school time. right? Like we can, we can study out books of the Bible or stories in the mm-hmm. Bible. Um, if Luella is struggling through her numbers, her and her mom, I've seen them do it a bunch of times, they, Melissa will go, okay, we're going to stop and we're going to pray. And they'll stop in the middle of her writing her numbers and struggling through them. And then they'll pray, and then things will go better, right? And then later, whenever I'm back around, Luella will be like, Daddy, 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 right? I didn't want to do the numbers. And then we prayed, and God made it better, right? Uh, like, you're, you're probably not going to... And I get to explain to her, too. Um, she'll have a be a crying mess. And I say, okay, we're going to stop, and we're going to pray. Okay? And she will say how... I, well, I have to tell her. I say, God can help you with it. Yeah. You know, if you let him and trust him. Yeah. And uh, she will be so glad afterwards when she finally accomplishes that. And she knows. Yeah. Like, God helped her. God helped me with that, you know. So let's change gears a little bit. Let's talk about the big one that everyone, the big thing that everybody says when you tell them you're going to homeschool. Right? Most people, or a lot of people, just go right out and say, right, well, what about the socialization? What about the social um, interact? Well, your kids need social interaction, right? And the ones that don't come just right out and say it that way, um, they'll say things like, well, there's all kinds of programs now that your kids can, for homeschool kids now, that there didn't used to be, and you can get them involved, right? Instead of saying, like, hey, you need to socialize your children, what they'll say is, you'll be like, They'll be like, hey, where do your kids go to school at? And you're like, well, we actually homeschool. And you know what they're thinking, but instead of saying that, they just go, well, yeah, there's all kinds of programs nowadays for homeschool kids that they can, can you know, be a part of these programs. And I'm not mocking these programs, right? I'm telling you, that is that is the big one, right? That is what stops a lot of people from homeschooling and what makes a lot of people think that homeschooling is weird is no socialization with your kids. So how do we... What do we think about socialization, if you will? And how do we get our children to not be hermits, I guess you would say. So that's kind of hard because I'm a hermit anyhow. And I went to public school. So am I. Now, <laughs> yeah. yeah we were there. If it wasn't for church and Mexican and Chinese restaurants, we would never leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... I know for us, are you just talking like genuinely or just us specifically? Like, So how are we, so I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> Here's my deal with socialization. A big reason why we're homeschooling is because we don't want our children to act like the rest of society. There, I said it, rip the band-aid <laughs> off, right? Um, I'm going to be really, really clear here. And forgive me if I offend you. I'm not trying to offend anybody. But here's just the honest truth and the way that I feel about it. And um, what do I know? I'm just a red red, red bearded hillbilly. In my opinion, ain't worth no more than yours, I don't reckon. We have had, I don't know how many public school teachers now talk to us and say how happy they are that we are homeschooling our children and please don't send them to public school. Right? Mm -hmm. Several of them. We know public school teachers that aren't sending their kids to public school. They're finding alternative ways, right? Whether it be homeschooling or private school or something like that, right? It is to Melissa and I so dangerous, and I'm not talking even about shootings, I'm talking about what our children are being exposed to and taught in the public school arena nowadays. It is so dangerous that we felt like we would be doing our children as parents a giant disservice. Um, We would be putting them in danger. Um, The school system today does all that it can to get our children to run away from God as far as they can get them to. And we felt like, as Christians, it would be a great mistake to send our children 
to public school. I'll just rip the band-aid off. Um, we don't want our kids to act like the society we see on the news. That's not what we want for our children. We don't want our children to feel like they have to live an alternate lifestyle because that's the thing to do nowadays. That's not what we want for our children. We want our children to grow up in a Christian, loving, compassionate, caring home. And we, we don't want to just throw them to the wolves. That would be a great mistake, I feel like. So, if you want Justin's honest opinion on socialization, it is this. I don't want my kids to be like society. No. So, don't really care much about your socialization. <laughs> That's Justin's, I don't feel very good today, and I'm just going to be honest with your response. <laughs> don't really care about your socialization. <laughs> You guys, ever hear the, <laughs> you guys ever hear this song, this, the old song? I'm not saying it's a good song because it's not. Take this job and yeah. shove it. Yeah, that's what I feel about socialization. Take your socialization, socialization and shove it. What makes me frustrated and frankly just really angry is that um, it seems like the school system is saying uh, these lifestyles that are going on. I don't know how else to put it, I guess. Yeah. Um, That's probably the YouTube accept acceptable way. I don't see how... It, it makes me angry that they are just saying, it's okay, because they'll get in trouble. Yeah. So, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going to say who, um, because I probably shouldn't. I don't want to get this person in trouble. But we were told by a teacher at a local school that kids can identify as furries now. Uh, and if they like bark or meow or whatever, uh, like they have to accept that as an answer. And I got mad on a few different levels. First of all, I was mad I didn't think of it. I never could spell very well. And if I could have just wrote bark, bark down, I got the answer right. Like I probably wouldn't have <laughs> took advantage of that. I'm not going to lie. Um, but on another level, it's how how ridiculous are we actually going to? to put up with like what kind of ridiculous world are we actually going to put up with right and we feel like it's our job as parents to say no and you know it's not all the school system like, no it starts at home yeah it starts it at home it absolutely does it i just can't fathom how your that would face be face is like the same color because as your shirt it makes right me now. very frustrated you are, is your neck red i don't know no well, it makes me bit, very yeah. frustrated guys that, that means she's mad i know trust me <laughs> It makes me very frustrated that people are just accepting that. Yeah. Um, it's wrong. And I had to explain to my five-year-old the other day why I don't send her to public school and the things that are acceptable maybe there that uh, we don't accept. Um, and I had to go into a little bit more detail than... I really wanted to, then you should go with a five-year-old. Yeah. A uh, five-year-old shouldn't be even questioning um, why uh, they saw... What they saw. What they saw. Yeah. Uh, to put it in... Yeah, if you can kind of think about yeah. that for a minute. <laughs> to put it in perspective, whenever... Melissa and I had talked about having a conversation with uh, our oldest kid. Uh, whenever she came down here to work with me at the tiny house... I told her, right? Like, if you and mommy's ever at the store and somebody that you don't know um, tries to, like, get a hold of you or something like that, yell and scream and kick and punch and bite and do whatever you can. Um, run away, first of all, but if you can't, right, then do all these other things. Like, we should not have to have that conversation at that age. And now, like, she doesn't let go of the cart. Like, I have taught her that. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's just the society it's just we live a in. It's crazy world right now. Yeah, it happens every day. And it happens in the small town of Missouri every yeah. single day. Just not a few miles up the road, um, a guy got arrested for literally kidnapping a woman out of Walmart. He just followed her around, found a vulnerable time out of the Walmart close to us. Right? Like, 
It's not just off in some city somewhere 100, 200 miles away. It was right up the road. Yeah. Right? Like, that is the reality of the society we live in. And so, as far as I'm concerned, I don't want I much. would rather be my kid, have my kids maybe be a little more shy. Yeah. Maybe a little more sheltered, if that's what you call it, than to be around that sort of acceptability, whatever. How I don't know. What the right I don't know is. if that's a word, but I get what you're saying. But <laughs> I try not to get too detailed Fire. for YouTube. Like, um, I'm pretty sure to that... be around that sort of environment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it just. I'm just gonna listen. If you if you if you're still listening, you're probably not. You're either really really mad already or you agree with us possibly if you're still listening right i'm just gonna be honest with you find a different way for your children right now if they're going to public school find another way grandparents parents something find another way so i was dead set uh when luella was born i was not gonna be <laughs> yeah gonna yeah tell them about this story. i was gonna That's be one tough. of those moms that you know Stayed at home, obviously, and took care of the kids, but my kids were going to go to public school. I would drop them off, and that was going to be it. That was going to be it. Yeah. Right? Um, I had worked in the school system, and I know uh, it's, it's a rough job. Very rough job. Uh, I would come home with headaches most every day. Um, very rough, and you need to pray for those that are, are Christian people working in the school system trying to make it better. I do want to say that. Let me clarify really, 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 really quick. Don't take our frustration as everybody that works at a public school, we hate them. Yeah. Because that's not true at all. No. And there are Christians that are doing all that they can yep. in the public school system now to try to help in any way that they possibly can. And praise the Lord for them, and pray for them, and encourage them. Um... But some of those same ones aren't sending their kids to public school. And I was one of those teachers. I was trying to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but then I felt like I wasn't wasn't supposed to be doing that. Um, and well, I got a little older. And um, the Lord wanted me to homeschool. And I was like, no. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I am not going to do that. Um, you know, I can just be a witness to him at home. And after I give in, right? I gave in, obviously. And I started homeschooling. Uh, the Lord started to put, not happiness, but joy um, in my heart. I got more excited and looked forward to it. And I love it. There, confidence. So I, I did get was, more confidence. Uh, I I wasn't confident at first. Um, you know, there are things I'm not very smart in. Um, she's, she's really smart. There are people smarter than me. And um, I know I'm smart, but I'm I'm saying I'm better at other things, right? Than than like math. I'm not very good at math. Uh, I was talking to a homeschool woman, well, I'm not going to say her name, but she was even said, even if you're not very good at it, you learn at the same time. I mean, you have to look at stuff ahead of time before you mm -hmm. teach it, obviously, but uh, there are people that can help you. This one woman, she said, uh, she could not, uh, I think it was, she could not get her child to understand something, and she literally... Uh, just prayed prayed so hard about it and it was like out of the blue uh the kid understood it yeah. you know and um but there's so many uh there are a lot of resources and stuff uh, for especially it today. now especially uh, today. anything i mean if you have a computer and a printer you can you're good yeah. you got youtube obviously you do you're watching this right yeah um, you can probably find about anything. So, um, Luella learned her days of the week by a YouTube video. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Melissa watched that YouTube video yes. in full before she let yes. Luella start watching that, yeah. right? Because you never know. 
Um, but you're, she was at least able to scream through that and go, okay, I think this is good, and we'll let our children watch it, right? Um, now, on the flip side of this conversation, I do understand having some sort of social, like, how do you talk with people, right? Like, our children need to learn how to carry on a conversation and those kinds of things, right? Um, and how to introduce themselves to other people and, and those kinds of things. Um, we are a pastoring family. That's so generous. And... Um, I also get asked to go do revivals every now and again, which is good. And so at most of those churches, there's other children she's never met before, right? And maybe the first night or two, yeah, she's a little bit bashful. But by the end of it, she's playing with them and you can't hardly get them to leave, right? And leave becoming the same way. And then, of course, at our home church, at the church that we pastor at, um, they all have their friends, right? And and they all go play and swing and, and they have Sunday school and Wednesday night and vacation Bible school coming up and they have that interaction that they need for sure, right? Um, but that interaction is at a fairly healthy level and something that we feel like is good for our children, right? Yeah. She goes to Sunday school, she has Wednesday night Bible study, um, and she has friends there. And she has other teachers. So Luella does. Leah's got mamas. So believe it or not, homeschooling lady is also a Wednesday night teacher, right? Um, yeah, that works. Yeah. But <laughs> there are also other teachers for other age groups. And Luella has moved up in an age group and has a new teacher now. And absolutely loves having a different teacher and has a good time with it, right? And all that. So she's not just... Right, like, because you guys know how it is. Sometimes with kids and parents, right, your mom can say something a hundred million times and you just blow it off, right? But somebody else say it and you're like, oh, I didn't think about that, right? Um, and so she does have some of that. Um, so I don't think I'm too worried right now anyway about them being, quote unquote, socially awkward. They'll know how to carry on a conversation, look people in the eye, those kinds of things. However, they are going to be a peculiar people. According to the word of God, if it's yeah. up to me, right? And it's funny because not gonna lie, like I went to public school. Um, we told you guys that, and there are times when I feel like I'm still socially awkward a little bit. Like I was a shy kid. Um, I was one of those kids that hid behind my mom's legs, right? Uh, I was, I was just socially very nervous, you know, and. Uh, I don't know. It's it's just funny how God works in that way. So I uh, I was a shy person, and then <laughs> then you married a preacher. Even after though, I was married to Justin. He was preaching. I was still very shy. Um, I was like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the one like you know talking to people and stuff. But God uh, literally. <laughs> shoves you into things like God took he Melissa. shoved me in. God, God took Melissa's shell and was like, ah! he did. <laughs> well, break that shell. Like again. I'm still shy. Yes, I'm you are. still shy. Yeah, I think that's just my natural uh, way. But um, being um, married to you and stuff, um, and the job we have. Uh, Sometimes you need that. And I didn't need that. I needed for my shell to be a little cracked, it I is. guess. Yeah. Uh, it has helped me a lot um, in so many ways by becoming a little less or a little more open. I'm still shy, yeah. but I'm a little more open. I'm open more to talk to people um, if they need to talk to someone or listen or yeah. um, fill in in somewhere Whatever. you know yeah. what i mean at church or something like that um so now there's some things i'm still like uncomfortable with i yeah. guess but god will help the social interaction yeah part of it. regardless like you said right you went to public school and you still struggled socially with you know so the first time i ever met melissa i was filling in at a church and it was before we were married before we were dating all of that right i remember she walked by me uh, as the custom of the church, I was back there, like, shaking people's hands as they left, right? And Melissa didn't even look at me, right? It was one of these numbers, right? <laughs> I still, I have trouble sometimes looking people in the face. Yeah. And that annoys me, too, sometimes now. Yeah. So sometimes I try to make an effort to look at people. So, what, 
So it sounds to me like what you're saying is like public school won't even solve all of those issues. Not for me. If you're it. using it as like an excuse of like I don't want to homeschool my kids because I don't want them to be socially awkward, right? You're going, hey, I was in public school and I'm still I still struggled socially, right? So I'm no social butterfly. Um, I I can carry on a conversation with anybody one on one, um, and we can talk for like some time, right? So Melissa gets tickled. We can go to like Walmart together. Um, and she'll find me catch she'll catch me talking to somebody and I'll come back and like, hey, we need to pray for that guy. He's got cancer and his you know, wife's really been having a hard time with depression and his you know, his mom just passed away and Melissa's like, How do you do you know that guy? I'm like, mm, just met him. And Melissa be like, How do you get these? I'm like, I don't I don't know, right? It's just how it works out. You just end up talking to got people and, and that's what happens, right? Usually starts off with like, Hey, how you doing? And then it just kinda goes from there. I have no problem with that one on one stuff. It's whenever you put about five or ten people in a group is whenever my heart starts going right i'm getting nervous um that's the reason why i think it's funny god called me to preach because you know whoever many people however many people's out in the congregation if there's more than about ten of them i'm a panicked mess uh, but god takes care of it he does and that's something i was gonna say too is i feel like people need to be more reliant on that god is going to take care of it i'm not saying you shouldn't do the work right right do the work, whatever your situation may be. Can I quote a verse? Yeah. So there's a verse in the book of Proverbs, and I'm not going to get this exactly right, but we were studying Proverbs on Wednesday night, and it was something like, prepare the horses for battle, but know your safety comes from the Lord. Right? And what that verse was saying to me was, do all that you can, but know that it comes from the Lord. Right? Um, so I have said in my hillbilly ways, you want a bacon sandwich uh get up and fix yourself a bacon sandwich do the work and the effort that it takes to provide that bacon and then go make your sandwich but know that that blessing all comes from god right don't don't forget that yeah right um so what's it like homeschooling in a 14 by 32 shed um so there's pros and cons um we homeschool right now, and we homeschool at the kitchen table where we're taping right now. Um, <laughs> our kitchen table is like the most important and most used piece of furniture we in eat, our house. We, we eat here, we do school here. Um, I would say, um, like it, we have talked about in previous videos, being a tiny home, I feel like it has brought us closer together. I know for Luella and I with school. Um, it, it's very good and for that. Um, and one of the bads is that like, if she's really focusing on her numbers, especially because she doesn't like doing her numbers, right? Yeah. And if she's really like trying to focus and then Leah like comes in here and is wanting to draw on a piece of paper, it's easy for Luella to get sidetracked and watch what Leah's doing rather than focus you know and, and if i had to come up with a drawback i it, would say that's probably it is one, of them. one um and part of that's just having three kids i guess um two yeah i mean you'd have that if we weren't working on school and doing yeah. something else and i'm mean, honest with you i went to public school and i could find anything to distract me from the work that i was supposed to be doing including just watching the second hand move on the clock waiting for that three o'clock bell to yeah. ring. yeah um <laughs> Trying to think of some other ones. Um, we always have trouble coming up with the downfalls. One of the good ones, just not for, not just for like a tiny home, but for like a homestead, right? Um, you can relate so many things to to life to learn yeah yeah absolutely um, canning and gardening and animals so canning you saw another video if you haven't checked it out already picking mulberries and, and tree stuff. to toast is the video tree to toast. for the canon yeah and doing things like canning uh that is sometimes my school in the summertime like here pretty soon i'm going to be canning a lot and if you think she's like slacking on doing that, let me remind you or tell you, 
how much math is involved in canning. There's a lot of canning. <laughs> and I show her, we look at the measuring cups and yeah. she knows her numbers. Um, you have to know how can, many pints are in a quart and how many She She gets it out. She can pour it. You know, whatever. Um, or when we're baking, stuff like that. Um, when she, I'm, I keep interrupting you, I'm sorry. Um, when our, Melissa started homeschooling at her old house, and we still canned there, you know. And I, I remember Melissa canning, like, jelly. And it takes, like, like, the last jelly took, like, 12 cups of sugar, right? And Luella wasn't writing numbers yet, but she was verbally learning how to count. And Melissa was like, count them out with me, right? Um, so that was more than just, like, sitting down and going, okay, repeat after me. One, two, three, four, right? They would do some of that. Yeah. But then later, whenever it was, like, fun time, and Luella probably didn't even recognize what was going on, really, right? Melissa was like, count them out, right? And she would be like, one, two. Two, and then sometimes you'd be like five, and you'd be like no, and you'd correct her. Like that is still schooling. No, and I'm gonna be honest, guys. We talked about how crazy the world is. Uh, prices on food aren't much better. They're going sky high. Oh. So a lot of more people, a lot more people are. Food prices are to, higher than Willie Nelson. <laughs> to growing uh, your own food, um, and that's not a bad thing to know. No, that should have been um, taught in school more like that should have been mandatory why did i have to take four years of language arts in high school i'm not going to be a i'm not a i'm not a newspaper editor i, I don't I still don't know what an adjective is i have no idea don't know i guess i use them I don't have, this is where i get aggravated i'm not saying that stuff's not important but it would have been way more important to learn how to grow a tomato yeah sorry Okay. That's uh, <laughs> why I did terrible in school. No. Um, <laughs> I think there's a good balance of both of those things. I would agree. Um, there needs to be a balance. You can't just grow tomatoes all the time. Because day. I don't want I don't want our children in front of other children to look not very smart. No. Uh, I'm saying that because the kids are can hear me. Um, I don't want them to look like that i don't want them i want them to be smart i want them to uh, excel yeah. feels good to have knowledge it um, does and uh but knowledge isn't always on numbers and and spelling it's not uh, always on that i want them to learn to to work hard mm -hmm. and to know how they can if they ever needed to they may leave our house one day and never use it again but at least I did my part on feeling like if they had they to, did they that. Could. And Same I mean, way with the wild edibles. Yeah. One drawback about wild edibles and children: uh, every time Leah sees a dandelion or a white clover, she wants to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> but how many two-year-olds do you know that know what a dandelion is? I mean, there is power in spending time with your kids and slowing things down um learning things like that and homeschool on the homestead or if you even if you don't live you know mm -hmm. on a homestead wherever you're at in an apartment you know <laughs> whatever um it's very very beneficial and a blessing we're going to run out of recordable time really quickly here so i'm going to say this I know with our tiny home, we're always like, I get it, tiny home living's not for everybody, and da 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 da, right? And you don't have to live in a tiny home. I'm gonna say this you don't have to homeschool. You don't have to send your kids to private school. Maybe you don't have the money for private school. We certainly do not, right? No. Uh, I could, we can't afford that. Um, but I am gonna say it this way you need to figure something out. For your children, especially if you're if you're a Christian, and you know what's going on in the school system, why would you continue to subject your children to that? I'm not saying you're in sin. I'm not saying you're unsaved. Yeah. I'm not saying any of that. What I am saying is it is very unwise not to figure something out. And I do want to say, like a lot of people say, you know, well, we can't do that. We don't. We don't stay at home. I understand that. There's some people that, that can't. Uh, there's some people that uh, do 
back to work. Um, but there's nothing wrong with sitting down and looking. That's what we had to do. Like we mm -hmm. looked at our finances uh, to see if we could make it work. And maybe we had to scrape by a little bit. Maybe we had to learn to live different. Maybe we had to learn to live different. Um, mm -hmm. But we felt, for us, we felt like it was more beneficial um, for our, our children. So, but. I'm a huge believer in there is a cost to everything, right? If you want to go and have a million dollars, um, there's going to be a cost associated with that, whether it be your time, your energy, whatever it may be, right? If you're okay with not having as much financial ability, um, and you want to spend more time with your family, there's still a cost to that, meaning you don't have as much financial ability to do things, right? When we sat down and figured out our finances together, and or were the very first time when we decided to try to figure out whether or not we could do this, right? The sacrifices were worth, the cost was worth the benefit to us. Yeah. Yeah. My mama told me one time, <laughs> Mama say it. You guys ever seen Waterboy? <laughs> mama, 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 mama say it. Mama said that uh, you can live on a lot less than you think you can. And she was right. Mm -hmm. You can. You think you have to have all of these things. You think you have to have this, that, or the other. When in reality, um, the best argument you could make is you have to have food, water, and shelter. Yeah. After that, you could argue that everything else is luxury. And do you really have to have... See, there's a difference between needs and wants. They don't teach that much either nowadays. But there is. There's a huge difference between needs and wants. Yep. Do you really need some of those things? Or do you just want them so bad that you're willing to... Ooh. That's going to get rough. Well, we may lose a few of you here, but... <laughs> Do you want those things so bad that you're willing to sacrifice your children for them? In which case, good night. How much, how closely are you just to doing child sacrifice like they did to Molech in the Bible? Yup. We just lost a whole bunch of subscribers. <laughs> Went from 50 to, or 49 to 22. But, uh, <laughs> oh boy, um, oh. guys, homeschooling uh, here at the tiny home and on the homestead uh, is awesome. I love it. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. I'm still. He's still stuck on the. Yeah, part. I didn't know that was I'm all going to come. On. Yeah, I didn't know that was all coming. Oh. That was yeah. Um. No idea. If you've wondered about it, thought about it. Um, it's a great thing. It you, really is. And you can do it. And, you know, part of part of homeschool isn't always just pencil and paper. It's not. Uh, it may be milking a cow one of, one of these days. Uh, or a goat. Pretty soon. Um, that's going to be part of our homeschool. Yeah. Uh, that's going to count for our hours. You know, have to look at your own state's personal uh, homeschool laws. There are homeschool laws, so check them out for each state. Yes. Um, for your requirements, Missouri... There are a lot of people that are moving here uh, to homeschool because it's a little more relaxed. Um, Take that off of her. And we uh, know, baby. It's it's great, guys. Just pray about it. Think about it. Uh, we did, and uh, we really like it. So yeah, and you can do it. Don't try to make homeschool public school at home, right? Yeah. Um. Because give it yourself gets some crazy. grace. It does. It's crazy sometimes. Find some people that you know, that you trust, that you are co compassionate of, or that you love, right? It's people that you know, find some people you know, you trust, you love, that are also homeschooling. Get some ideas from them, some tips from them. Two plus two has always been four. So, um. And there's more people that homeschool than you think there are. And there are nowadays, especially, yeah. right? And we have several people, um, that we know that have either pulled their kids out of public school or they have little ones that aren't in public school yet that have said we're going to homeschool. Yeah, it's very beneficial to reach out. It is, absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. Please, please, please. I did not mean to offend anybody. If I did, I do apologize. 
Once again, I will say like I do at church sometimes, if you're offended in the Lord, take that up with Him. But I was not trying to offend you uh, in any way, shape, or form. This is going to be an ugly video. I can see that coming. Thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you next time.